These farms are a lot of fun. You can get an insane amount of villagers in a very short time. And you might be thinking you wanna build one yourself, but maybe not from a tutorial. So what do you do? Well, in this short video, I will give you the principles you need to play with this kind of farm for yourself. The goal is to give you an understanding of concepts rather than a template to copy and paste. So let's get right into it. The whole idea behind these farms is that we take an outpost, which has a large area that will exclusively spawn pillagers, and we start a raid. Any pillager within 96 blocks of a raid will join that raid and be taken out of the mob cap. This allows us to spawn an infinite amount of pillagers. So first things first, pillagers can spawn in a 72 by 54 by 72 block box that is centered on the middle block on the top floor of the outpost. Within this box, only pillagers can spawn. So this is where we want to keep all the spawning. Any spawning outside of this area will be normal mob spawning and count towards the mob cap. So that's our limitation for the size of the farm. But the mechanic that really makes this farm is the raid. Starting a raid is easy, but the real consideration is the raid placement and how to get it into the correct place. To start a raid, there needs to be a claimed point of interest within a 3x3x3 sub-chunk area around a player who has bad omen. Points of interest are things like job sites, beds, or bells, and they must be claimed by a villager. Most people use composters paired with villager. You can move the composter to make the villager unclaim it, thus disabling the raid. If there is only one claimed point of interest within 64 blocks of the player, the raid will be centered on that point of interest. Any pillagers within 96 blocks of that raid center will then join the raid and not be counted towards the mob cap. If they are outside of this 96 block sphere, they will not join the raid. To prevent this, you can spawn proof against pillagers, which requires a light level of 9 or above. Pillagers can also leave a raid if they move outside of a 112 block sphere around the raid center. Again, this will make them count towards the mob cap. So with a single villager, the claimed point of interest is our raid center. We just need to make sure it's in the correct location, right? Well, yes. But if that was the only option, it would limit our farm design a little bit. Basically, we have two spheres that we need to consider with our farm. The 96 block raid sphere and the 128 block despawning slash spawning sphere, which is the only place that any mobs will spawn. We want the farm to be inside of both of these, but we also want to prevent the despawning sphere from being outside the farm as much as possible to minimize spawn proofing. With a single static raid center, our difference between sphere centers is limited to within two subchunks of each other, because any further won't trigger a raid. Then to have the spawning platform to be within both spheres, we need to be lower than desirable with the despawning sphere, which will require more spawn proofing. This was okay when I removed all the area outside of the farm in creative, but in a survival farm, it is undesirable because the farm location is linked to an outpost. So we'll require a lot of spawn proofing or a world eater, which should certainly be prevented. Fortunately, a single point of interest raid center is not the only option. We can manipulate the raid center in two main ways. First is to move it. We accomplish this by removing the claimed point of interest. This then makes the game search for a new valid raid center within the surrounding 5x5x5 subchunk region and moves the raid center to the center of that subchunk if a valid point of interest is found within a 3x3x3 subchunk area of that newly selected subchunk. This works exactly like stacking raid farms and can give us maximum flexibility. The downside is that it requires some redstone and timing and it can get just a little bit complex. The other option, which is the one that Inverted and I chose for our Pillager Grinder tutorial, is to use more than one raid point of interest to have the game center the raid on the average position between all of the points of interest. When starting a raid, the game will count all the valid points of interest within 64 blocks of the player. It will then center the raid on the average position of all of the points of interest. In our farm, the middle villager is too far away to trigger a raid itself, but when the top villager starts a raid, the middle villager is close enough to shift the raid center to the middle between both of the points of interest. In this way, we can shift the raid 32 blocks with no redstone. If using an on-off switch, timing is important here as the middle villager should claim the point of interest before the top villager claims their point of interest. Otherwise, the shift won't happen and the raid will be centered on the top villager. 
You can of course forget about all of this and use a world eater or do whatever you want to get maximum efficiency, but it's not as viable in survival. Even so, it's fun to play with, so go wild. After setting up the area and the AFK location, the next design consideration is how to adjust the amount of spawning that happens. The biggest parameter that will boost spawning is the amount of spawning platforms. The reason why is because we are fighting against a quite high elevation, which makes our spawning chances quite low. Every platform we add will increase our chances of the spawning algorithm to pick one of our platform's elevations. There is a slight diminishing return per additional platform, but it's minor, and in general the benefit curve is quite linear within the limits of our spawning area. The elevation of the top platform will also have an impacting on the spawning rates. I've included a tool in my tutorial video that covers these dynamics as applied to that farm, but the principles apply here too. So check it out for the details on elevation and the impact with the spawning platforms. I will leave a link in the description. After the number of platforms and the elevation, the next step to further push spawning would be to build larger platforms. This is fairly straightforward. Bigger platforms, more blocks, more chances for spawning. Filling the whole spawning area with platforms, like I demonstrated in the first video on the topic, will give you the maximum spawning rates. Even so, these rates are total overkill. The short story is that the maximum XP absorption rate is 36,000 orbs per hour. Pillagers drop up to 8 XP per mob and have an average orb size of 4.2 XP. 36,000 orbs an hour times 4.2 results in 151,000 XP per hour maximum. Any additional orbs dropped will not be absorbed in vanilla Minecraft. The rough rule that I found was that six platforms of about 1,800 blocks with a bottom platform elevation of Y80 or below will give you a little more than the max XP absorption rate. But you should dig into that more if you are interested, as there are a lot of different possible arrangements. Check out the elevation calculation sheet for more details on the impact of elevation in these types of farms. The last major consideration when building this grinder is striving to reduce the pillager lifetime. The lifetime will have a very small impact on spawning rates, but will have a much bigger impact on lag. We found that using raid pathfinding to make the pillagers run rather than be pushed is the best option. But there are simpler options, such as water streams, which are easier to build, but laggier and cause cramming issues. To maintain good pathfinding while the raid is running, the pillagers should have a point of interest to pathfind too. Without a point of interest, they will pathfind, but it is much slower. For instance, here is a version with golems and the bottom cells. It does work, but the pathfinding is significantly slower. With the topic of pathfinding, you can go really crazy. Inverted and Craker have been going crazy testing pillager lifetimes with different platform shapes. Here is their most optimized design for a bubble column based farm. Inverted went even crazier and made a super fast single dimension piston acceleration system that reduces the average lifetime to near 200 game ticks or 10 seconds. So you can see you can go really crazy with these systems, but it's of course what you want to make of it. And that's it for the basics. It's not too complicated, right? There are two more things that I want to note though. Carpet mod, carpet extras, and TIS carpet are very useful for working with these farms, particularly with the raid command, which can help you verify the raid center. Mini HUD is also useful for drawing boxes and the light level overlay. Beware though, Mini HUD's outpost structure boxes are not the same as the spawning bounding box, so do not use this for designing your farm. With that said, Thanks a bunch to the people on Discord who have been digging into this, particularly Inverted, Beecraker, and Hop, who all have put a lot of work in. Also, thanks to my Patreons, as always, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.